children good morning i am manoj chauhan physics faculty from convent of jisun mary dear children in my last lecture i told you how to prove the equations of motion by graph i hope everybody have done this if you have any query you can send uh, directly to the message to your class teacher so that i can make another video on it okay now let's see today's topic is circular motion after that i will solve the exercise of ncrt okay some extra question we will discuss circular motion circular motion what is circular motion dear children if object is moving in a circle with certain velocity that is called circular motion i will take a circle over here let this is the circle in which object is moving okay let the radius of the circle is r and object having some velocity at this point this is velocity and when object is reaches at this point its velocity is always tangential remember just like the tangent you have to show the velocity here it is the velocity here it is the velocity what we are seeing over here at every point direction of velocity is changed direction of velocity is changed and this is called radius so we will say circular motion an object is said to be in circular motion okay motion of the object motion of an object in a circular path in a circular path is called circular motion remember what are the things which you have to remember here that is velocity will change velocity changes direction at every point during this motion at every point that is tangent that is tangent remember dear children what is tangent any point which is passing through the circle any point which is passing through the circle that is called tangent remember okay just like if this is a circular path you want to draw the tangent at this point this is called tangent so this tangent will give you what direction of the magnetic uh, sorry uh, velocity at any point remember remember velocity will change at every point when motion of the object in a circular motion that fact you have to remember always r is the radius of circle and one more thing radius is same at every point you can see here radius is same at every point in a circle this is the center remember an object is moving by this way at every point its velocity changes its direction so this is the proper way to define the circular motion now we have here two types of circular motion which we are going to discuss one by one first one is uniform circular motion uniform circular motion okay so what is uniform circular motion and second is non uniform circular motion non uniform circular motion okay uniform circular motion or non uniform circular motion one by one we will discuss in detail first of all we will deal with the uniform circular motion let's see how to understand it uniform circular motion uniform circular motion that is motion of an object in a circular path circular path with constant speed remember with constant speed this is the main thing dear children you should understand if object is moving in a circular track with constant speed then motion of the object is called uniform circular motion remember okay 
I mean to say speed is constant at every point. Speed is constant. Even velocity is constant, but it change only direction. Only this is velocity basically, and this is the speed. Okay, I will say this is velocity. Only change direction. Change direction. So what is uniform circular motion? Motion of the object in which object is moving with the uniform speed in a circular path. That is called uniform circular motion. Remember. Okay, for example, motion of the earth around the sun. Motion of earth around the sun. If earth is revolving around the sun in a circular path, its speed will be constant okay its speed is constant if its speed is constant it means it is called uniform circular motion remember it is called uniform circular motion okay how suppose that this is a center and uh, center is act as a sun here remember center center is act as a sun this is a sun and this is the earth which is revolving continuously with certain speed around the sun in a circular track if speed of the earth is constant this is earth okay so that motion is called uniform circular motion suppose that if you are tying a stone with a string and just uh, revolving by this way okay one end you can tightly hold with your hand here from the center and it is moving continuously by this way so if it is following the same speed at every point, that is the example of uniform circular motion. Dear children, you can deal with the motion of the needle in a wrist clock. In a clock, when you see the needle, minute hand needle, okay, hour hand needle, second hand needle, all needles, they will follow what? Circular track. And their speed is fixed, otherwise time will be different if speed is different. That's why needles of the clock okay they will also follow the uniform circular motion so dear children if you have the situation like that object is moving in a circular motion okay and uh, having constant speed but velocity is changing its direction at every point that type of the motion i must say that is called uniform circular motion okay now how to calculate the i mean to say Situations of uniform circular motion. What are the important points which you have to remember regarding the uniform circular motion? Okay, important points. First thing, in circular motion, if you want to calculate the speed of the object, the speed is what? That is distance upon time. Distance upon time. So what is the total distance when one revolution is done in the circle? That is 2 pi r upon time is suppose that t. So this is the formula of speed you can calculate in circular motion. Let's see. Suppose that an object is moving from this point and finally reaches at the same point. How much path length is covered? What is the distance? Actual path length covered by the object. Okay, That is circumference. What is circumference? That is 2 pi r. So that's why distance you will call 2 pi r here. Remember, at time t, that is time t, then speed will be distance upon time, that is 2 pi r upon t. You should remember it. All right, everybody. Okay, if you are taking the speed here, a velocity here, velocity in one rotation, a one revolution, you can say. Okay, the velocity will be zero. Why? Because in one revolution, what is the displacement? Displacement will be zero. So when object is reaching at the same point, let this is a circular path that is starting from here, and again reaches at the same point, it means displacement becomes zero. When displacement becomes zero, what is velocity? Velocity is displacement upon time. Remember. Okay, displacement is zero upon time, that will be zero. So that's why velocity will be zero meter per second in one complete revolution. And what is the distance? Uh, sorry, speed, that is distance upon time, distance is two pi r, and time is t. Why this way, dear children, you can understand uniform circular motion. Okay. So another is non-uniform circular motion.
non uniform circular motion okay this is the motion of object object in a circular path circular path when its speed is changing speed is changing okay so that type of the motion is called i want to say non uniform circular motion suppose that you have a circular track i'm just giving the example you have a circular path over here okay and uh, this is the circular path suppose that a car is traveling in this circular path by different speeds suppose that your speed is 20 kph km per hour and at this point car speed is suppose that 30 km per hour and when car is reaching at this point its speed is suppose that 60 km per hour what is happening here its speed is changing in different points that's why this type of the motion is called i mean to say non uniform circular motion to be careful about it what is uniform circular motion in which speed is constant what is non uniform circular motion in which speed of the object is continuously changing that is called non uniform circular motion okay dear children that is all about the first uh, chapter motion which we have studied now i will solve questions all questions of the ncert along with some extra questions i hope you are getting it revise it everything from the ncert <coughs> and uh, the lecture which i have delivered to you see it so many time so that you can get the proper concept now i am taking first question of ncert here let's see here okay first question of ncert i am taking all right dear children i want to take the first question that is page number 100 you can check in your ncert book okay so i will take here this is the first question dear children let's see how to crack it okay so all the question i'm going to solve one by one you have to understand it page number 100 question number 1 an object as moves through a distance can it have zero displacement if yes support your answer yes of course So I will give you the example of how it will happen. Displacement is zero. Okay, let this is the surface of the Earth, and I want to project an object upward direction. If you project an object in upward direction, what will happen? It will go up and then come back because gravity is always acting downward direction. Okay, velocity of the object in opposite direction. That's why it will return back. when it will return back its displacement will be zero remember because it is coming at the original position okay and what about the distance distance suppose that this is 100 meter height okay so what is the distance dear children distance is the total path covered by the object total is 100 upward and 100 downward that will be 200 meter this is the justification of this question an object move through a distance distance to hai object mein but it can it have zero displacement yes it has the zero displacement this is the support for your answer similarly you can give the example of the circular path also okay let the radius is r what is distance distance is dear children 2 pi r but displacement will be zero in one revolution okay so why that that way you can support this question that is question number 1 i will take second question now question number 2 so that you can understand it well okay that is important question second question is important question let's see how to understand it yes let me zoom in 
All right. Let's see, dear children, how to solve this question. A farmer moves along the boundary of a square field. Okay. Let you have a square field over here. This is the square field. This is a square field. Of side 10 meter, each having side 10 meter. 10 meter is the side. You know, square have the same side everywhere. In 40 seconds. A farmer moves along the boundary of the square field. I mean to say one trip. Suppose that farmer starts from time t0 and reaches again, going by this way and then coming back. Okay, that is called one trip. One trip around the field that is covered by the man in 40 seconds. Remember, it is given in the question. What will be the magnitude of displacement of the farmer at 2 minutes and 20 seconds? So what is the total time? We will write here how many trips in 2 minutes 20 seconds. I, I can apply the unitary method here. 40 second is equal to 1 trip. 1 second is equal to 1 upon 40 trips. Simple thing. Okay. How many seconds you need? 2 minutes and 2 minutes 2 into 60 plus 20. That will be 120 plus 20. Total time we need 140 seconds. So in 140 seconds, how many trips are there? 1 upon 40 into 140. Okay, 1 0 will cancel out. That will be 7 by 2. 7 by 2 means 3.5 trips. So dear children, this I have calculated in 2 minutes and 20 seconds. How many trips covered by the man, farmer? Okay, so then 3 complete trips. What is the meaning of this? 3. Complete plus 0.5 means one half. One half trip. I mean to say three complete trip reaching at the same point. One half means if this is A, this is B, this is C, and this is D. So dear children, you start from A. Complete trips in three times com completing and reaching at point A. But one half trip ka matla, A to B and B to C. That is the half trip here. I must write this is suppose that. Time where finally farmer is reaching and starting from T0. Okay. You need to calculate the displacement. How will you calculate the displacement, dear children? By taking simply straight path from initial to final position. I must draw by this way. This is the displacement. Okay. So I must say this is displacement S. I want to calculate the value of displacement here. How much it is? Let's see. That will be. Simply you can use the Pythagoras theorem to calculate it because this is 90 degree and the side is same. This is 10 meter. This is 10 meter. Then use the Pythagoras theorem square of the base. This is base and this is perpendicular. That is 10 square plus square of the perpendicular. That is also 10. Now you can solve displacement is equal to 10 square. That is 100 plus 100. Okay. Finally, it will be displacement is equal to root of 200. And I can write 10 root 2 meter. So this is the formula of I mean to say displacement in this particular question. See it carefully. Okay. This is good question. You need to solve it once or twice at least. One more question I am taking here. Let's see what is the next question here. Yeah. This is another question, dear children. I want to solve from page number 100. Okay, let's see what is the question. Which of the following is true for displacement? Okay, which of the following is true for displacement? What are the questions? We want to take this here. Yeah, we want to do this. Let me zoom in. And Just check it once. Now, which of the following is true for displacement? It cannot be zero. This is false. Because displacement can be zero. In circular path, it will be zero. Okay. And second one, its magnitude is greater than the dis no. Displacement, magnitude of displacement is always what? Magnitude of displacement that will be less than or equal to distance. Remember. Okay, it may be equal in straight line when object is moving in a single direction, uniform direction, not changing the direction. That point of time, displacement and distance are equal. 
okay but mostly uh, when you throw the object in upward direction which is coming back distance will be double but displacement will be zero so that's why distance is always greater than or equal to displacement that's why it is also false remember the magnitude greater than the distance traveled by the object no okay so both the options are false dear children you can understand by this way one more question i am taking today so that you can get maximum Yeah, distinguish between speed and velocity. Dear children, regarding the speed, you have to write at least three points. First, speed is a scalar quantity. By this way, you can do it. And velocity is a vector quantity. This is the first difference. Okay. The second difference, speed is what? Speed is distance upon time. and distance uh, dis velocity that is displacement upon time this is the difference displacement upon time this is the second difference third difference speed is always positive but velocity may be positive negative or zero any value during the motion so these are the differences you must remember it okay every time so dear children i have solved these three or four questions to you today okay in my next lecture in next week you will get some other solutions okay i will complete all the solution within two or three lectures after that i will give you the extra questions and uh, revision also you must deal with me okay and follow these particular videos regularly so that you can understand the and try to do the self-study also from the book website.